I'm T.H. Culhane for Solar Cities, and today we're going to learn how to build a home scale biodigester in miniature. We're going to build something that you can build at home or in the classroom, and not only will it teach you the principles of building biodigesters, but it'll actually work and give you about five minutes of cooking gas every day. So we're going to start with the um, with the simplest part, the RT India Digester, invented by Dr. Anand Karve of the Appropriate Rural Technology Institute in Pune, India. And he taught me how to do this at a large scale. I'm just making it smaller with Home Depot stuff that anybody can get. It basically consists of two buckets. And the first bucket is going to be your digester, and the second bucket is going to be your gas collector. And it's called a floating drum gas collector. And what you want to do is get yourself two buckets, one which fits upside down, in the other, so it can go up and down. They call that a telescoping digester because it goes in and out like a telescope. And sometimes when you find buckets, they're not going to fit because they're tapered. They're wider at the top and smaller at the bottom, and that means when you put them upside down, the top doesn't fit because it gets smaller at the bottom of this one. What I've done here is chopped off the top. I've cut the, the handle and the top rim off of this so that it fits in, and you need it to be able to go down until it gets uh, completely immersed. And so that's the first step. And then what you do is you drill two half-inch holes in the top of your gas collector, one here and one there. And you drill a three-quarter inch or one-inch hole, that's up to you, down at the bottom of your digester. And then a three-quarter inch or one-inch outlet at the about um, near the top, somewhere a few inches below the top. I do it just below the rim. And that's your preparation for that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take from the electrical supply, not the plumbing, you're going to take one of these adapters, and this has a locking nut on it and an O-ring, and you're going to take that and you're going to put that in the bottom of the tank with the O-ring on the inside, and you're going to Screw that on, clamp it down so that it's watertight, and then take a piece of the electrical conduit for three-quarter, that's what I'm using here is three-quarter, cut a piece off so that when you put it on the inside, when you put it on the inside, it reaches to the center of the bucket, and that's where the food is going to go in, the food waste goes into the center of the bucket. These plastic pieces are stuff when I was drilling that uh, I drilled out. I'm not going to throw them away because they act as surface area for bacteria to grow on. So if you have plastic residuals from your building, just toss them in the bucket. That's fine. That gives the bacteria more places to live. And once I've done that, <clears throat> I'm going to take a, uh, a piece of electrical conduit three-quarter inch threaded on one side and slip on the other. I've put a piece of PVC in it and I'm screwing that onto here. Then I put an elbow on and then I put a pipe. Now that is the throat of our digester where you put the feed the food in, ground up food, and then it goes in to the center. So that feeds the plastic sacred cow if you like. Then, of course, every time you feed it, it's going to raise the level of slurry on the inside, and so you need an overflow, and that's what this hole here is for. So I've got another three-quarter inch. Put my O-ring. Um, this time I'm going to put this the other way around. And always put your O-ring on the inside. and screw down the locking nut. And then I take this piece of pipe here and put this on. And then I put one of these curved 90 degree electrical fittings in the pipe like this. And I bend it down so that I basically now have a way to get my fertilizer out. And this level here should be about the same as the top of your bucket. And that means that when you add food and it rises the water level up, 
then it'll begin to spill into your fertilizer can or into your garden. So you're feeding and then fertilizer's coming out. So that's the basic setup there. Then I take the bucket that I drilled the two holes in the top of upside down and I take two more electrical fittings, these ones half inch, and I'm going to put them with the threaded side up and screw them down. Another one, same thing with the O-ring on the underside. I always put my O-rings inside the digester. And then I take the, um, I have a threaded coupling that I can put onto here, and then I've got a slip coupling in it. So I go like this here. I should have another one of those somewhere. Ah, no, let me reverse that. Let's use a threaded elbow and put the threaded elbow on. So there's the threaded elbow. And then there should be another threaded elbow here that goes on to this one. And then from there, I take small pieces of PVC and plug them in. And I put slip valves, half-inch valves, on here. And that way, the gas won't come out. So I've got two of these. Now I put my bucket in there. And as you can see, now we have is a, what is a functioning biodigester. I will also come out of here with a piece of PVC. Then I will use a slip to threaded adapter. And I'll put a barbed hose connector, half inch, on there. And then vinyl tubing, clear tubing. This is the half-inch variety, cheapest you can find in there. And then on the other end, a brass barbed connector inside. What you have now is an RT India collector, an RT India biodigester in miniature. And the way that it works is very simple. When you feed Roundup food waste, I use my Insincorator food waste grinder. Some people call them garbage disposals. When I feed the food waste in here, and this has already been set up with cow manure or horse manure or human manure uh, as the bacteria supply, when I'm feeding it and it begins the bacteria that was in the cow manure eats the food, it produces methane gas. This is filled with water until here, right up to the top, and this is immersed in it. And with these valves closed, as gas is produced, it's going to raise this bucket up as it fills with gas. Then all I'd have to do is open this valve, the gas goes through the tube and out to my stove, and I can flame test it from here. And as it uses up the gas, of course, this sinks back down into the water. When it produces more gas, this rises up. As I use it, it goes down. And so every day, this is just rising up and down as I produce gas, as I use gas, as I produce gas and use gas. And any time I add food into here, it raises the level of the water, which spills out over here, and it's the best fertilizer that money can buy. And you use it on all of your plants, your vegetables, your shrubs. It can be used for hydroponics or aquaponics projects. It is really nutritionally complete fertilizer, better than any NPK that you can buy. So that's the basic digester that we've been building around the world based on the Artie system. And you can do this at home. Now, what if you're in a cold climate and in the winter it's going to freeze since this is an open bucket and so the water here is exposed to the elements so that this can go up and down, this eventually is going to freeze. So what we do instead is we build an indoor or a outdoor insulated digester to attach to this and let this serve mainly as just the gas collector. And you can fill this then with even salt water or antifreeze or anything else and not use this as the digester that makes the gas. Just use this to collect the gas. So what we do then is we take a five gallon Home Depot bucket like this one here and we take the lid and we drill three holes in it. For practical purposes so that you can actually use this, I drill a two inch hole here and then I drill a three quarter inch hole here and a one inch, I'm sorry, half inch hole here. And you need 
a tank adapter. This is the critical part of making your biodigester. For a two inch tank adapter or bulkhead fitting, it's pretty hard to find in the US. Home Depot doesn't carry them. You'll have to go Ace Hardware sometimes does. You may have to order them and they're very expensive. We get ours from Egypt, from, uh, um, from uh, Magdi Zahran, and his company makes them. And all over Egypt, they're made in various sizes, and they're very inexpensive. So, uh, but a bulkhead fitting that goes through, and so I slip that through this way. Put my, they have two O-rings, one on the bottom and one on the top. I put that into the lid and put the locking nut down. It only has to be hand tightened, by the way. No wrenches are necessary for this, even on a large family scale digester, because you're just clamping down the O ring. And so I've got that fitting in, and then I've got a three quarter inch adapter. The nice thing about the Zahran adapters is they have long threads, so they can be easily added to. So I put that in here. That's going to be for the effluent or fertilizer to come out. Let me just screw that down. And then I have a half inch adapter. The only thing I've done with this is I have sawed off the bottom and I did that so that I get as much gas when this is producing gas from even the top. If this was sticking down lower, I wouldn't get the top gas out. So I just sawed off the, uh, the long part of this and screw that down. Again, no wrenches are necessary for this. Then I have a prepared lid, and I haven't damaged the bucket at all. So what I have is I have a feeding tube here for the food waste to go down after it's been ground up by the insinkerator or other uh, waste disposal. I have a three-quarter inch, could be an inch, could be two inches, that's up to you, for the fertilizer to come out. And I have a half-inch tank adapter for the gas to come out. And because the food needs to go to the bottom of the barrel, just as it did in this one, I take a, in this case, a ten-inch uh, pipe, two-inch, and see it doesn't fit on here, but I use a threaded uh, coupling. Pop that on. The effluent needs to come from around the center of the tank, and that's because the food waste is rich in energy and you're putting that down at the bottom, so the bacteria are gonna live there. Bacteria also are gonna live on the volatile or lightweight uh, materials you put in fatty acids, for example, any lipids or fats from your food, any grease that's in it, is going to tend to float. And so there's going to be bacteria living at the top eating the fatty parts while the other parts are being eaten by the bacteria on the bottom. So the dead zone is around the center where there's not a lot of bacterial activity going on, and that's where we draw our fertilizer out of. And so we want this pipe here, and take a three-quarter inch adapter, we want this pipe to be long enough to reach down to the center. The gas, of course, is coming right out of the top because the gas is rising to the top. And voila, you're done. You put another coupling and a 10-inch, 2-inch, a 10-inch long, 2-inch PVC pipe in here for the neck. And then you take an adapter. Let's see if we have a threaded one here. We will use, uh, we'll use this here. Then we will put a piece of PVC, we'll put this piece in, another piece of PVC, find a three-quarter inch valve, and we will then come out with another piece of PVC and a way to put that there. And then for the gas coming out, we can also come out here. Or better yet, let's do this. Let's make this low. Let's use a threaded, a threaded elbow here, and let's put this piece in here, and then our valve, and then we will come from here to 
here and now the vinyl and very inexpensive barbed adapter. And what you have now is you have a completed Solar Cities biodigester. So here's the completed Ardi India biodigester used in tropical and subtropical countries. This is the Solar Cities uh, digester that we usually build out of old 1,000 liter IBC tanks that you can find on a Craigslist for about a hundred bucks. So then what we have is we have any bucket at all can be used. The idea is that you just need three penetrations for your biogas digester that can go into the lid of any kind of tank. You've used even 5,000 liter water tanks for this in Africa. And so as long as you have a two inch feeding pipe that goes down to the bottom of whatever tank you're using and you have a one inch or three quarter inch one inch is better, the bigger is better, or two inch if you have space in the lid. If you have a pipe that's going to halfway down the tank and then coming out, that's for the fertilizer to come out. Again, so whenever you pour new food in, then it spills the old used fluid out as fertilizer. This always has to be higher than this so that you have a little head of pressure that will force the spent fuel, as we call it, out. And then you have a gas uh, outlet for the gas which rises to the top. And these two have valves on them. So when you seal this down, if this is closed and this is closed, when you feed this, and remember you're going to start by putting cow manure or horse manure or human waste in, let it ferment for three weeks till it starts making gas, then you can start feeding it. And when you do, the gas pressure is going to build up. It's got nowhere to go because this is closed and this is closed. It's going to back up the fluid up here creating a head of pressure and then if this is still closed when you open the gas valve that head of pressure is going to push the gas out then when you open this valve it will spill fertilizer out lower the volume here and then you can add more food so when you're adding food you keep this valve open so that you're pouring food in and you're getting spent fuel out then you seal this and you wait gas builds up the pressure has nowhere to go it raises the level here and then when you open this up the gas comes out. So that is the design that we've been working on. And this can be insulated. This you can put styrofoam around and then we put this uh, stretch wrap that they use in airports. So a single person can cut strips of styrofoam, put them around, stretch wrap the whole thing, and then it can stay outside and it can work throughout the winter. Or you can keep it inside and just put a valve here so that you have nothing, no worries of anything bubbling out here. We've done these in our upstairs bathroom at home put our baby's diaper wastes in it and created cooking gas from the baby's diaper wastes. And it doesn't smell at all because the whole thing is sealed. Now, the best thing we found is to combine the two systems because while this will produce gas, the gas is produced slowly enough that you can't just light it from here. You need to store it. Now, you could put a plastic bag on here or a balloon or an inner tube and slowly fill that and then use that. And you will find that a um, 100 liter plastic trash bag works fine and when you use that hundred liters of trash bag then you get about 15 minutes of cooking gas off of it. But uh, the best way we found is to combine the Arty and the Solar Cities together and what we do then is we just take a piece of the vinyl tubing, we put it on here, we then go into, we put another um, on this valve here, we put the barbed connector like so. We hook this up and then on the outside put this to go to the kitchen. Now what we have is a situation where I feed the Solar Cities digester, the sealed digester, and I feed it, the food waste goes down to the bottom, the microorganisms eat it and start producing gas. When I was feeding it the fluent, the fertilizer goes out here. I want to capture that. So I hook this to there, and now look what happens. I can leave this valve open, I can feed it, the spent fuel will go out here and into here, and that means that if there's still any energy that the microbes didn't get, it will be digested by the microbes in here. 
the gas goes from here into here, and I leave this valve open, so when the gas is being produced, it is progressively lifting this up, leave this one closed, and now I have a double digester. And it works nicely because the German experience is that in the first stage, you get about 80% of the energy out of the food. And the fertilizer that comes out still has 20% energy capability. And so the bacteria in here can win that extra 20%. And that's pretty significant. So by having this one active and this one active, I can use it. But then as the winter comes, these bacteria slow down. I can still use this as the gas collector, even though it's outside. I would not put any antifreeze or salt in it, of course. The way that it would stay unfrozen is that I'm filling this with warm water every day, so the fertilizer coming out every day is warm water, and it keeps it above zero degrees in here. So even though it's too cold to make gas during the winter, it stays fluid, and this can continue to rise and fall. And then this gas goes out to the kitchen, to the kitchen stove, and the fertilizer spills out here into the garden and all the energy content, or most of it, has been removed, and then it's great for composting. So this is the entire setup. This is what we have on our porch in Germany. We have, of course, a much larger system that produces anywhere from a half an hour to an hour of gas a day. In Africa, we've built even larger systems, 2,000 liter systems that give two hours to four hours of cooking gas a day. But it's always basically the same thing, a sealed tank and an open uh, double barrel arty type digester. And it is so simple to build. This one will work. This is not a toy. You can actually use this to get a few minutes of cooking gas every day from your kitchen garbage. And uh, it's very effective. And then once you've got the principle, just scale it up. And you don't need to buy anything else except a larger tank and two larger tanks here. The other parts are the same. And you just remove them from the little system and put them on the big system. And you're basically done. So. Hope this was helpful to those of you who are contemplating building a biodigester demonstration for home or school or community. And have a good time joining the Biogas uh, Innoventors and Practitioners uh, Consortium. You can always join our group on Facebook. We are Solar Cities Biogas Innoventors and Practitioners, and we look forward to seeing you and working with you.